uh, was diagnosed um, early 2011, January 27, 2011, with stage four of colon cancer. Um, and that day I'll never forget, and it changed my life in so many ways that I didn't realize at the time. But now I'm realizing that the events that transpired from there basically changed my whole way of thinking, my whole life, and uh, that kind of slowed my life. You know, I didn't kind of, it, it stopped. Everything just stopped right there, right then. My life just stopped. Um, I, at the time, I didn't realize that I was going on a, on a spiritual journey. I thought it was going to be a medical journey into my cure, into my, you know, into my treatment. But it ended up being a very spiritual journey the next two years, what happened. Because you realize that you cannot count on anything of this earth when you're going through something like that. First thing that I, that I did was, you know, quit all the drinking and the partying that I was doing before. Um, like I said, I, uh, I didn't, I wasn't one to go out and just have one drink. I want to have, you know, I wanted to not feel good. I wanted to pass out. I, I didn't have one drink. I had one bottle in the night. You know, I wanted to keep pushing it, pushing it. And it got to the point where it broke. And at the time it broke, I was actually at an emotional low as well because the market had turned around. I wasn't making the money I used to before. I was stressed out because I had big bills to pay because I had a million dollar home at the hill. And you know, I had all these bills that I had to keep up with to please people that really didn't matter in my life. And all that went away. Degrees in, in, in real estate. I, San Diego State finance degree. You know, I, I, I was mortgage broker, California mortgage broker, uh, uh, real estate broker. I had all these titles and all these certificates and all these things, but nothing was. It was. I wasn't ready for what life had in front of me. Those are the times where I could really say that I got closer to God. If I didn't have God in my life, I honestly don't think I would even be here right now. Many nights where uh, He is the only thing that got me through the night. Um, I remember just, <clears throat> you know, getting on my knees and nobody was around and just. He asked for uh, strength and uh, wisdom and more importantly, faith to know that you're going to see another day. Uh, what happened, my story was, if I get back to it, after eight months of chemo, wasn't really working, and I, I wasn't getting any better. Um, as a matter of fact, I was getting worse. There was a spot in my liver that showed up. I lost almost 100 pounds. I, I used to be, you know, an athlete. You know, you know not, I wouldn't say an athlete, but I used to work out and all that good stuff and want all these big muscles to attract, uh, you know, the right girl at that time that I thought was going to like me because I looked a certain way. But all that was stripped of me as well. So I didn't have my physique. I didn't have my money. You know, that one was gone right away. Uh, I didn't have my million dollar house on the, on the hill. I couldn't work. Um, you know, all the friends that were around me that I thought were gonna be with me forever, they all disappeared. My partner that was, she was with me for four years she was gone too when all that went away and 
during that time, you know, God was molding me and preparing me. You know, there's a song that I really like. Um, it's called El Alfarero. It kind of was a message for me from God saying, it's just a process, you know, it's a proceso. El Alfarero, you're, you're transforming me into something better, you know. So, that song really got a hold of me. And um, to tell you the truth is, is still to this day, it, uh, it's like the, it's like an anthem to something I hold on to when, you know, I pretty much probably sing it almost every night. And, and it's pretty much reminding me that it's just a process that God's taking me through. He's going to transform me to something better. And, and I need to learn how to release and let go of my control. And, and, and let God do what He wants to do in my life. I always thought I was independent. I didn't need my mom, I didn't need my stepdad, I didn't need any of my girlfriends I was with. I was the number one and I didn't need anybody else. I could take care of myself. And they showed me that the, I need to forgive and release and let go to accept and to love and to let God into my life. And it was a painful lesson that I think is still in the process. But little by little, I'm learning how to, how to let go and let God take control of my life. And I'm learning how to walk by faith, not by sight. You know, if you ask me about was I was I uh, a man of faith before, I would have to say no. I would have to say no because I was uh, overachieving on everything else, but when it came to my spiritual side, I, I, um, I was very weak. I was very weak now that I know that I was very weak in my faith. And now that I'm involved more in church and, you know, I, I, I try to um, surround myself with people of faith, I could see how if somebody's raised from a very young age and plant the seed of faith inside of them, later in life when things like this happen, they have, it's like riding a bike, they already know the steps that need to be taken and they could just go back to what's natural for them to have faith. But for me, it wasn't something natural that came naturally to have faith. I wasn't raised in a, in a faith home. I wasn't raised in a home that, a prayer, I wasn't raised in, in a home like that. It wasn't anti that but it wasn't part of our everyday life. Like I told you, my the chemo wasn't working. I had to pray about it. I prayed to God to give me guidance, to give me strength, to give me faith. Um, and during that process, it seemed like it was miraculous. Like one one of the stories that I, I have that was, couldn't be a coincidence. I rented, uh, I bought the CD called Cancer is Curable Now, but naturally. It was a CD that I ordered from the East Coast. Right. So I ordered it, and I probably had it for maybe three weeks, didn't open it, didn't you know look at it. And one Saturday, uh, I decided to pop it in and, and watch it. So I watch it, and it was very interesting. They were interviewing several doctors from all over the world that are curing cancer with natural holistic means. And I was watching it casually and I told myself, you know what, the next day I'm gonna write things down. Right now I'm just kinda of watching it and, and tomorrow I'm gonna to start writing some stuff down. So halfway through I fell asleep, I didn't even finish watching. The next morning I'm, wa I'm walking here at the local farmer's market in San Diego and I see somebody that resemble 
for one of the doctors that was speaking on the video. But I'm, I'm just too shy to approach him. Hey, man, there's no way that this is the guy, you know, that was right there last night. They're interviewing people from all over the world. How can this guy be here, you know, right now? Shopping with his family. I just saw him and his wife walking. So anyways, I get the courage to approach him. After I didn't do it one time, God put him in front of me again during my shopping at the farmer's market. And I finally went up to him. I said, sir, I want to bug you, you know, with your, your wife, but are, are you a natural path? He said, yes. I said, well, I just saw a movie last night and uh, you, know, you look like one of the doctors that was interviewed. He said, well, I did a lot of a lot of documentaries, which one are you talking about? And I told him the name of it, and he said, oh yeah, I was featured in that one, that's a good one, I like it. And I said, well, I'm going through this challenge, and I explained to him, he said, well, why don't you come see me? And he gave me his card to call him, and I was able to see him, and he put me, he gave me some insight and some knowledge that I didn't have, and I ended up using some of his protocol to later cure myself with God's help. Now I know I wouldn't say cure myself, but God, through God and the people He showed me to go with, I ended up clearing my body of all cancer like a year later through natural means. Now, what happened after is a different story. I got back into, you know, working and and trying to overachieve not on real estate but on a different project and I ended up relapsing about a year after that. So uh, I was about a year cancer free. And recently, the last three months, you know, everything, I, I got relapsed and everything is now worse than it was before. But now it's time for me to regroup and pray and listen for God's wisdom. And I know he's gonna take me through this one the way he took me through the other one. And, and now, even though I was learning during that time, now I realize that I really have to let God control my life and not me be in charge of it because, you know, maybe he doesn't want me to be, to do that, you know, that project. Maybe he wants me to do other things that will bring abundance to myself and to others and and help other people. I'm not sure exactly where, what, what God has in my life, but I'm trying to listen on a daily basis and follow. So, the message that I want to give out there is that it's a lot easier to prevent than to cure something when you already have it. I used to think, um, it was for a while that I, I was feeling, I was playing the, the blaming game and I was blaming, uh, you know, God and, and blaming myself. You know, did I, what did I do so bad to deserve this? And, uh, you know, so after I started blaming, you know, my upbringing, I started blaming God, I started blaming all these things. And after I just realized that you can't really blame anybody, uh, I think that, um, you know, they say that God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And I think that even though I'm hurting financially, I know that God will provide at the right time at the right place. So I'm not worried about it. Before I thought it was something that, that was created by me. But now I realize that it was God who was giving me the abilities to do what I was doing financially. I know that when something like this happens, the only thing you have is God. And if you don't know how to tap into that, then you're gonna to have to learn the hard way like I did. Just have that faith and know that if something happens to you, that God is with you at all times. You never know who you're gonna to touch, when, where, or how. Um, you know, I just had a gentleman uh, last week that I never met before in Los Angeles. I went to go meet him, and uh, he's a very wealthy man. And he donated ten thousand dollars to me. You know, after sitting there and, and uh, having breakfast or lunch with him uh, for fifteen minutes, 
he turned around and said, well, well, why I want to give you $10,000 so you can help yourself out. And um, what do you say to that, you know? You know, that's things like that that God puts in my life that, because I got to the point where I didn't, I didn't know where I was going to get money no more. I was dying. <clears throat> that's a big lesson that I've learned is that that when you're walking by faith and you're running by faith, that, that sometimes it's going to come from somewhere you don't even realize. And um, for that, you have to stay in a place of gratitude at all times. You know, always be prayed up every day, kind of like brushing your teeth, kind of like, you know, all these things. It's, well, we are spiritual people having a physical experience. When you realize that we are not of this world too, we are living this world temporarily. And we're gonna end up going back to our spiritual side, but we still are spiritual beings right now as we're standing here. You know, we think that this is our reality and, and it's really not. But you realize that prayer is just like a muscle, you know, you, your faith doesn't happen. You know, you're not gonna have you're not going to hit your knees on the floor one time and then you're going to have all this faith the next day. No, faith is something just like anything else. You build it little by little by little by little. And that's something that it's a process. Life's a process. You, know, you walk by faith day in, day out in everything that you do. And little by little, God starts to change your life your circumstances and, and he started moving in your, in, your, in your body and in your life the way you never even imagined but it has to you have to be true to the process I mean he is control of everything that happens in this world and so, you know, I don't think that he necessarily wants something bad to happen to you but I think that uh, part of our journey is like I said, to to follow him, and I hope that I was able to uh, share something that is so intimate to me right now, um, and hopefully that you're able to get the message and and uh, for whatever is worth, use it in your life. Transforma mi vida a tu parecer. Hazme como quieras, pero hazme un nuevo ser. Me dijo, no me gustas, te voy a quebrantar. Y en un vaso nuevo te voy a transformar. Pero en el proceso te voy a hacer llorar. Porque por el fuego te tengo que pasar Quiero una sonrisa Cuando todo va mal Quiero tu confianza En lugar de tu queja Quiero una alabanza en la tempestad 
Y quiero que aprendas también a perdonar.